Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a somewhat belated look at Flax Game Engine. Now this is one I've checked out a couple times in the past. We're checking it out today because Flax 1.8 was released, and we're belated because it was released over the holiday weekend. So uh, after April Fools and then a whole bunch of news happened, I took a little bit of time off to get this one out here. But here you can see this is Flax Engine. The reason why we were talking about Flax Engine 1.8 was just released. Uh, this is just a graphical showcase of what it's capable of. Things like screen space, ambient occlusion, global illumination, screen space reflections, environment probes, and so on and so forth. So they just announced the release of 1.8 of the engine. And we're going to go ahead and check that out in just a second once we get through the end of this graphics demo. So if you've never heard of Flax before, uh, it is a commercial game engine. The source code is available, however. Uh, it has a license. It's tied to revenue. So if you don't make something like a quarter million dollars a quarter, it's free. Otherwise, I think it's a 4% royalty. Uh, as you can see here from this attachment over here, uh, it is entirely C-sharp driven. So you can see here, like uh, so, sure, I trust you. Uh, it's using a typical C-sharp approach. So if you are a C-sharp game engine developer uh, and you're looking for an alternative to your existing game engine, Flax could actually be a good pickup for you because uh, it's got a very familiar workflow and editing environment. Again, C-sharp programming language support. Uh, I do really like this engine, but it is mostly the work of an individual, which is both uh, mind-blowing and a little disturbing at the same time. Uh, so we're going to talk today about Flax 1.8. Let me demonstrate two of the major new features with Flax 1.8. Uh, the first one is this. So come on down here to uh, content. Go ahead and create a new file. Uh, and we're going to create a prefab like so. So then we're going to get into the prefab editor like this guy right here. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and add an element to this guy of type UI and then UI uh, canvas. And what you see here is you now have an integrated UI editor. So if you're doing UI work, uh, you have this nice WYSIWYG editing environment for setting things up. So here you can see our canvas control. We'll go ahead and add a control to it. Uh, so UI control like so. And then we'll pick this control. Come on over here and pick the type of it. Uh, so set type and we'll make it say a button. So you see your button is there. You can go ahead and position it in the world. You have control points for setting up how things look. And then we'll come on down here. Uh, so button text is available right here. So hello world, like so. And of course you come down here and you can change out the font of it. So let's make that much bigger. We can change out the color of it. So we'll make that much bluer. And I did not click on, so there we go. So there is our, oh, that looks like a bug. I don't know what's going on there, but anyways, you now have a new UI editor. You can work both in the world editor as well as in the prefab editor. Uh, so definitely a nice little feature there. Another thing that added here was uh, support for .NET uh, 8. Uh, so if you're using the or .NET, I think it's .NET 8, C-sharp 9, uh, support is now there as well. And then one other feature, speaking of prefab, let's drop this, uh, into our game world over here. So we're going to import this GLB file. Another thing you can now do is import a model directly as a prefab. So you can bring it in and then boom, it is ready to go. You can drop that into the prefab editor and work with it accordingly. So very nice new feature in that regard as well. Uh, so that is like the highlight new features. There's more to it. Let's jump on over to the release notes. So here we are, Flax 1.8 has been released. Uh, so what do we have here? .NET 8, ASTC texture support, new UI editor, new models, importing pipeline improvements, tank, ve uh, tank vehicles, animation graph live debugging, and a number of bug fixes. Uh, so there is a game up on Steam right now, a walking horror simulator uh, made using uh, the Flax game engine. So again, first off, we have the new WYSIWYG UI editor, should make making game UIs a lot easier, you can make the tooling directly view and modify directly in the prefab or game window interface. They do have support for .NET 8, uh, so that is C-sharp 12. The numbering gets very confusing. I wish they'd synchronized those as well. So they moved up from 7 to 8 as the base SDK version, so C-sharp 12 is now supported, and you're going to get uh, the performance improvements of that. Uh, this is also a long-term uh, support version, so it's going to be supported by Microsoft until November of 2026. Uh, so that is the version of .NET being used. So if you want to use C-sharp 12 features, you can. Uh, they added ASTC texture compression, uh, results in up to 80% less texture memory usage. Uh, it supports ASTC 4x4, 6x6, and 8x8 block compression formats. Uh, can be set in the platform build settings area. 
Uh, you can import models directly into Prefab. So we saw that earlier on. So you can select the option Prefab. It will import all meshes, materials, textures, and animations from the source file into a subdirectory and create a prefab asset with the whole structure of the source file. Uh, workflow addition allows to work with larger assets that may contain multiple sub objects and improve iteration times due to re-import functionality. Uh, and we have new vehicle support. So physics simulation always been an important topic during Flax development. This time we've added a lot of new options for better vehicles, such as steer versus speed, anti-roll bar configurations and tank vehicle support. Uh, so you can see here a tank moving around in the world, uh, animation graph. Uh, so they do have a nice visual, uh, animation graph editor. Uh, it now has a debugging support. So current playback position of the animation and state machines insights. Uh, additionally, the new animated model get trace events will allow you to gather animation playback information in the game code. Uh, new root, root motion feature allows to specify which components of the motion should be applied to the movement of the object. Position as ZY, position Y, rotation. This fixes root motion for Mixamo characters. Also, there's new option to calculate root motions on the skeleton center of mass for movement. Uh, improvements to the spline tools. So you can hit control and the right mouse button to add new control points and shift to snap. Although, frankly, for me, I couldn't get it to work, so I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, fallback font rendering, uh, some editor improvements such as saving collapsing panels into state for subgroups in the property panel, vertex snapping, uh, move the uh, gizmo, hold down the V key, it'll snap to vertexes, uh, refresh collection editor interfaces to be more streamlined, SI units such as meters, kilograms in input fields for both displaying and parsing, and quick script creation via add script a button, uh, and that's it. So that is Flax Engine 1.1. If you're interested in learning more about Flax, uh, it is available at flaxengine.com. Uh, and then uh, feature-wise, it's actually pretty robust what Flax is actually capable of. Uh, it's cross-platform, Windows, Linux, Android, Mac OS, iOS, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and Xbox are all supported. Uh, got nice things like hot reloading of both C-sharp and C++. So if you actually want to script your game using C++, that's another one of those more interesting Flax features. They also have a visual scripting system available as well. Uh, it is a staggeringly robust engine. Again, I did mention earlier on about the cost. Uh, you pay 4% when you release after you've made uh, $250,000 in the quarter. So for the vast majority of indie developers, this is free. Uh, but do be aware there is that revenue attached. Uh, so if you make more than uh, $250,000 in a quarter, which would be like, again, a million dollars in revenue if it was spaced out nicely over the year, there is a 4% royalty on Flax. But uh, yeah, that is it. Uh, the other nice thing is it's got decent uh, documentation available as well. Uh, source code is available out there as well. Uh, it has a good manual, covers pretty much all of what you need to know to get working with Flax. Uh, it's an interesting engine. Again, it, it is a single guy uh, that is, uh, well, there's other people contributing to it, but it's primarily the work of a single developer out there. So just do be aware that that if he got hit by a bus, uh, there's potential issues there. But uh, otherwise, it's it, it definitely is a game engine that hits above its weight. Uh, nice little 1.8 update. Let me know what you think of Flax in general of the 1.8 update, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.